Hello. Good evening. Yes, this is Poem Praise 2. And peace and blessings to you. And welcome back. Yes, uh, the next extraordinary African American for this evening is Jan Ernst Matzelinger. Inventor, born 1852 to 1889. And it reads as such. If the shoe fits, it's partly because a man named Jan Ernst Matzelinger invented a machine that knocked shoe manufacturers right off their feet. Matzelinger was born in Paramaribo, Suriname, then called Dutch Guana in South America. His mother was a black woman from Suriname, and his father was a wealthy Dutch engineer from Holland. At age 10, Matzelinger went to work in a machine shop. When he was 19, he got a job on an East Indian merchant ship and spent the next two years at sea. When the ship docked in Philadelphia, he decided to give life in the United States a try. After working at various jobs in Philadelphia, Matzelinger moved to Boston in 1876, and a year later settled in Lynn, Massachusetts, where he got a job with the shoe manufacturing company. Meanwhile, he started night school to study physics and improve his English. In his spare time, he painted and gave art lessons. Certainly a busy man, huh? Now, as Matzelinger worked in his shoe manufacturing company, he noticed that production was slow because workers had to attach the bottom of the shoe to the top by hand. He decided to invent a machine that could perform this task. Now within six months, he had built his first model from wood, wire, and cigar boxes. Although it was far from perfect, it was impressive enough to attract a $50 offer, which he rejected. In 1880, Matzelinger completed a more advanced model. This one got him a $1,500 offer. Although he needed the money, he turned down the offer again and began working on a third model. He soon realized, however, that he would need financial help. He got it from Melville S. Nichols and Charles H. Dalnow in exchange for a two-thirds interest in his machine. Hmm, busy and wise, right? All right. Now, on March 20th, 1883, Matzelinger received patent number 274,000 207 for a lasting machine that would rapidly stitch the leather of a shoe to the sole. Its drawings were so complicated that a scientist from the patent office in Washington, D.C. had to travel to Lynn to observe the machine in action before he could understand it. So certainly it's kind of like he had to see it to believe it, huh? He had to go on a trip. <laughs> Go look at this machine, because he certainly could not understand the blueprint. It was worth the trip. Matzelinger lasting machine made it possible to turn out 150 to 700 pairs of shoes a day, instead of only 50 pairs a day previously. It also cut manufacturing costs in half, so it was quick and efficient. All right. Now, anticipating success, Matzelinger, Nicholas, and Dalnow established a union 
lasting machine company and went into business. Soon they sold out to a larger company. Matzelinger sold all his patents, five by this time, in return for stock in the company. Mm. In 1886, Matzelinger became ill with tuberculosis and died three years later at the age of 37. He left his stock in the Union Lasting Machine Company to the North Congregational Church, the one church in Lynn that had not rejected him because of his race. As for the company that owned his parent, his patents, it became the United Shoe Machine Corporation. Sixty-five years later, it was worth over one billion dollars. Mm. A legacy that became a billionaire. And on that note, I'd certainly like to thank you for tuning in to Poem Praise 2. I'll just let you uh, receive that in and marinate on it. <laughs> now we are certainly going to move along with the extraordinary African Americans. And next in line is going to be Isaac Myers a labor leader, um, the time period 1835 to 1891. That is who's going to be coming up next in our extraordinary African Americans. And, and yes, we're getting through the book. This is what we done got through right here already. You see, this is what we got to go through. So we're going to keep it moving so we can push right along through this extraordinary African Americans, okay? But I certainly would like to thank you for tuning in and have a wonderful rest of the evening, all right? And certainly I'll do likewise. And peace and blessings be upon you and your family, too, okay? All right. I'll talk with you guys a little later. Till then, certainly be blessed, y'all. All right now.